Hey there, my name is Volton, and welcome back to the Flat World. In today's episode, we're not going to be doing anything too exciting. Really, we're just going to be doing some stuff that I've been meaning to do for a while now. I know you probably wanted something a little bit more exciting like what we did in episode 10, but hey, you can't do always be doing stuff that's exciting. Sometimes you need to do stuff that's boring. Hey, I don't make the rules, that's just how life is. So, there will be some bombs, so that's fun. No more yapping, let's just get onto it. So, first, I want to get this uh, tower I have here upgraded, because for, go away, yeah, 10 months ago. 10 months ago, I built this tower to uh, cover up my iron farm. Now, that being said, you would think that the iron farm goes somewhere, like, up there, right? No, I'm not sure why I made it a whole tower, because really, it's a pit. Yeah, big pit. It goes all the way down to the deep slate layers. And that's where my iron farm currently is. And there's just all this big empty space here. And I'm pretty sure there's mobs spawning inside her too. Almost all of this remains unchanged since it was built in episode 4. And I'm sure you guys knew. But episode 4 was uploaded like 10 months ago. So, you know what, since this place here is probably going to be decommissioned soon because... I mean, look, it's a mess. That is a chest monster in the making. And this storage system is tiny as hell. It was good for a time, but now, it's too big. I mean, too small, what am I saying? Now, if I want to make this base truly good, I'm going to need to get good with interiors. But here's the thing, I'm not good at interiors. This place here, for example, hardly has an interior. It has like a floor and that's about it. Nothing interesting on the inside, really. These build this building here does not have an interior. School building here does. However, it's very simplistic as you can see. The classrooms themselves are very boring. And this place here, well we need to destroy it later so let's not get too hung up on that. And Hexagon Building kind of has an interior but it's uh, in the works. So we need to become the master of real estate if we want to make my tower there the ultimate base. So yes, that means today we're going to be putting an episode focused on this uh, city area. And I'll probably be the next episode too. And I think... Really the best way to get started, to make space for future builds, we should remove this, because I don't use it. Literally, I don't use this at all, and it's dysfunctional, because it's too dark in there. I don't even need crops anyway. Like, I have a small wheat farm in there, which is perfectly fine. And if I want food, you know where I go? I go in there. So yeah, this building here, it needs to go. It's a big waste of resources too anyway. It looks ugly anyway as well, with the open roof, and it's actually, the design's actually wrong in some places on the second floor. So yeah, we need to get this thing destroyed. But first, there's also just a little bit of other stuff I want to do around here first. If you'll notice down there, I have the big central road which kind of connects everything, and a bunch of these other branching pathways. However, I think I, it would just be, I think it would just make more sense if I just actually remove those pathways and instead put a bunch of sidewalks made out of brick everywhere. Now back in my uh, 2024 trip to the state of Maine, I noticed that almost everywhere I went there were these brick sidewalks which I thought had a lot of character to them. And to me, it made sense. You know, you're in a post-apocalyptic world like mine and you're like, hmm, we need some sidewalks, but we don't have good access to cement yet. What do we use? Also, just looking around, the cobblestone's kind of ugly, so we're gonna need to fix that. So, this is gonna be the part where I turn on replay mod and, uh, you know, just make this place look a lot nicer. To start off, I had to remove all the cobblestone pathways. Then I had to dig out the areas for all the new brick pathways. Finally, I just had to put in some new dirt. Now it's on to destroying the old farmhouse. Now, I decided to reuse the bombers from episode 10 for this, but here's the thing, I'm stupid as hell and forgot how to properly build them, so it took a little bit of fiddling, but eventually, I got it working. From there, destroying the rest of the building was a piece of cake. And plus, I would have a lot more space and resources for future builds. The bottom has quite a few things though, so I had to mainly remove the rest. And just like that, the building is no longer here. This is still honestly crazy, in my opinion, for me. This building was here for like, almost a year, I think. Like, not counting uh, when episode 4 was published, like, while still recording it. 
I think the building may have genuinely been a, about a year old. There's actually now very little evidence of the uh, first episode at all now. And hell, a lot of stuff I did in episode 4 is gone uh, too, I think. I think. More so episode 3, I think. That's still around for episode 3, but it's heavily changed now. In general, the world's changed a lot in the year that I've been playing on it. You know what? It's not changed enough. We need to do more. So I want to become a master real estate agent, right? Just gonna interfere here to say that I went into a tangent about how I was going to build a town to populate with villagers. Only I never ended up putting the villagers in there. Whoops. I want to get more packs with like interiors so that way we can give that place a proper like uh, interior because right now there's only an interior up there. It's otherwise just kind of there for sake of looking nice. I signed out for interior practice, I would need some new buildings. So, I decided to repair some land by turning it all into dirt by putting a lot of water source blocks on it. However, then that left me with an issue. I needed to remove all that water. I tried using an automatic uh, water remover, but that didn't work. So I decided to just mainly remove it off a bunch of slime blocks. That took about like two hours. But you no, know, it left me with some good time lapses, so oh well. If I do use this tactic again in the future, I will probably try to actually look into automatic ones that work. I owe you guys an apology. Sometimes when I'm using replay mod to record most of my footage, I end up forgetting to press record. However, somehow I went from a blank ass field to walls, frames, and oh my god, there's the beginning of a house. Now it's time to actually build houses. The idea here is that this area was populated by rich people who were denied access to the corporates, or you know, the rich part of the town. With the idea being that you could only go to the corporates if you were born in the corporates. Yeah, industry is a dictatorship, get over it. Anyway, I decided that there would be eight houses here and it would all look nice and it would be a gated community. This place also has synthetic grass, unlike the rest of uh, the slums. Really, it's just a big flex on the poor, which uh, it's kind of meant to remind you that these houses are not really populated by very nice people. Then I got to work on the first interior. I thought I would do interiors for all eight houses, however, I got bored doing the second one and decided that, whatever, they're, they're basically gonna look all basically the same anyway, so I decided to just cut it there and move on. However, I actually got bored of this project in general, so I decided to record the Halloween special instead. That was pretty fun, go check it out, it's episode 10.5. It was day 14.06, I was I was doing, I was gonna do interiors for all eight houses, but then I realized something. Ouch. Not only am I just not motivated to work on these houses anymore, it's just I'm never going to be going inside them anyway. So what's the point? You know somewhere I do go inside pretty often? The hexagon building! But its interior is incomplete! It has been incomplete! And you know, what about my tower? This thing has not had a complete interior ever. It's just the top floor that's had an interior. I've been wanting to give this thing an interior for ages. Yeah, it's just this top floor and it's how it's been for a while. I want to build the interior for this. So I decided to first just completely finish all the factory walls. This is the most important part of the interior after all. This actually started a while ago, back in episode 10, as a side project while I was waiting for honey. However, now I decided to just finish up the interior. And you know what? It's very nice to actually have the interior walls done. Now I don't have to look at an ugly, unfinished interior. For the most part, decorating farms meant just blowing shags around them, or just making them look uh, just a bit nicer. Though, uh, for that moss farm, it was already broken, and when I tried fixing it, it all became worse. But whatever, we'll just ignore it until it needs fixing. It was very good to actually get the uh, gravity farm decorated, because I'm going to be needing this farm a lot in the near future. It's been a while, it's now day four- Ooh wow, that's a nice number. For once, I can actually call this place done. This building, 
I started on it like, what was it? In like episode six, was it? And then started uh, recording over a thousand days ago now. Which means this building has been in the works for a thousand days. That's actually insane. I mean, hell, I didn't finish the exterior until like episode eight. That was almost at day 1000. 600 days just for the exterior. This is the most concrete I think I've ever built with. Not gonna lie. It's also just nice that to have this and just some, you know, for farms now look at least acceptable. Ignore the cactus farm. For a while it was just like stone and the dirt was still there for so long. I don't know why I left it like that. I never liked it. Anyway, with the interior of this place now basically complete, the whole reason I decided to do a lot of interiors this episode is because of my tower. <sighs> oh god, you can really see it. My tower here. This is Argenti Tower. It was built in episode 4. It was complete construction around day 300. And it has remained the tallest structure in my world ever since it was built. And it's basically my de facto base since my since my star house no longer exists. But even then, I never go here. Like, I almost never go here. Because my storage is down there, so there's no reason to go up here. This place also actually doubles as my iron farm. I don't know why I made- I, I don't know why I put a whole ass tower over it. I really didn't need to. The only interior I really have for this tower is the top floor. And, uh, well, that room there. It's just sloppy. Like, look, there's still dirt from when, uh, I was still framing the place. The frame, it was built out of dirt. I'm hoping to get, uh, the interior of this place done around day 1500, so that way we're still on schedule. Let's get building. Okay, now for the actual tower itself, you know, it's funny because I was, there was all this talk about how... Oh, I'm doing all this so I'm good at interiors when the time comes. And I just make the most basic ass interiors ever. I'll be honest, I didn't have much of a plan. I just needed more storage, and that's gonna be what most of the towers used for anyway. So yeah, it's not that interesting admittedly, and I apologize. But hey, there is a little something if you do want something a bit more interesting, I guess. Okay, so you want something a little bit more interesting, then this part is all about the lore of the flat world. Cause believe me, there is lore. And there's a lot of it. Now, which of, which lore do I actually share? Well, if you just want to see the cool builds and don't want to hear any lore, you can click off now. You can wait like a few months for episode 12. It's not coming out in this month, that's for sure. I think this is an interesting part of my world's lore to go over. So, let's go over that. So by the year 3000, yes, watch episode 8 if, you are, if you're a bit confused. By year 3000, the Republic of Industria was not as good as it once was. It went from a thriving democracy to an authoritarian dictatorship, heavily focusing on empowering the industry and all that. But more importantly, it was starting to become more dictatorial, less free, like how it was supposed to be when it broke off from the Third French Empire in the 2700s, particularly in the Lowland region. This area used to be known as Benelux back in our time. It has become largely muddied, with the government planning on turning the southern Walloon areas into just normal areas that were basically being I mean, treated also kind of badly, and wiping out the Walloon identity. The same with the north, which was... It as far as they were concerned, it was just populated by more Germans. And they already had a German autonomous zone, so may as well just call all these guys into North Germans. Obviously, that's kind of awful, isn't it? And the people of the Lowlands realized this too, and decided that enough was enough, and staged a revolt. Eventually, this became known as the Lowland Rebellion, breaking out in year 3000. The hope of the rebels was that, eventually, the rebellion would last long enough that the German autonomous zone would choose to revolt as well and break off Industria, severely crippling the dictatorial nation, which would then eventually maybe lead to its collapse. However, that's not how it went. See, here's the thing about staging a rebellion. It's not as easy as just declaring one. No, no, no. You need to organize an army and all that. More importantly, you need support. Hell, in our timeline, the United States barely secured its independence from the British. We, 
you know, us Americans, we needed the French and Spanish for help. See, support in general is very important if you're going to stage a rebellion. The Lowlands had none. So as a result, the Lowland Rebellion was defeated by the government and subsequently occupied. The rebellion ended in 3002 with an Industrian victory. However, to some people, it was just the beginning of the end for Industria. Now, the main reason Industria won it all is because nobody supported the Lowlands and Germany did not revolt. However, what if it did? What if the Lowlands did get help? Well, then Industria would have folded, and people are starting to realize this. By 3024, the year that my world is set in, generally, the nation is still alive and doing just fine. However, it is definitely not going to reach the end of the century. I can tell you that much. There you go, more flat world lore. If you want more, just say so in the comments. If you don't want any lore, then that's fine. You can leave. Or if you want the lore to be on a separate thing, then sure, just tell me in the comments. Well, everyone, I think that's actually going to conclude it for episode 11. Now, I know this episode really wasn't as exciting as uh, previous episodes. You know, episode 10 was awesome. I know this one wasn't really as substantial, but honestly, this episode is really just full of stuff that just needed to get done. So, because of that, it wasn't really as exciting as I would have liked it to be. But do not worry, episode 12 will be a lot more interesting, I promise. Because that backdrop you see behind me now of the city, it's going to be completely different. We're going to be doing something I never thought I would end up doing on this flat world. Don't know what I'm talking about? You'll have to wait and see it until episode 12 is out in a few months. So until then, my name is Volton. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.